Welcome back to Vampire. At the end of the last episode, I was going to explore more of the West End. We had just explored just a tiny bit of it. I'm still going to do that, but I'm going to make a little detour. Um, I have so much XP, 14,000, and the West End is very difficult, especially with all these new vampires and new types of enemies that I want to level up, but I don't want to level up until I've given everybody medicine in the Western Docks. So I'm just going to do that real fast. Um, one thing... However, that I did notice, other than giving medicine, one thing I want to do is talk to Rodney. That's the person that was hiding down below with the skulls. So they did come topside. I want to see what I can talk with them about. Good evening, sir. I'm glad to see you safe. I am not safe. I should never have come back here. My life is in danger. I know it. You're much safer here than in that contaminated area. Bullets kill people quicker than diseases and epidemics, Dr. Reed. Yeah, I don't think they are safer here, especially since the whole damn district is plunged into chaos. Looks like they're healthy. Hmm. I guess ask about their life in London. What can you tell me about this district? The East End Dogs only knows one rule. Dog eat dog, and blood calls for blood. The gang will have their revenge on me one way or another. What can you tell me about the locals? Most people would say that Sean Hampton and Tom Watts are good men who try to sort things out. But for me, the real boss around there was my best friend, Jack Gillingham. Jack Gillingham, you say? Everyone ran there knew Jack. He was a rock. A mountain, even. He feared nothing. Your friend Jack has something to do with you fleeing to the contaminated area where I found you. I want to know more. Jack is dead. That's all you need to know. Dead because of me. So much violence. So much sorrow. All of that because I refuse to be insulted again. The docks are being consumed by violence. Any war you may have started was already brewing underneath the surface, just waiting for a spark to ignite it. Perhaps you're right. The district was doomed before I was born. But I cannot stop myself thinking that Jack died for me. Why do you say that? After I killed that gang member, the wet boot boy suspected Jack. And being loyal and all, he did not refute the accusation. The death of your friend has affected you deeply, hasn't it? Jack Gillingham was the real deal. He believed we could change the world if we were united and focused enough. And he pulled out the best in each of us. You're right. He died to save you. That alone gives me an idea of the kind of man he was. He was the bravest. And no one dares to say openly that he got killed by those bastards. You are not going to spend the rest of your life hiding, Rodney. What are you planning to do? Honestly, I have no idea. How am I supposed to live while so many have suffered because of me? Only you can answer that question. But one thing is certain. Since you owe Jack your life, I think it's fair to live it in a way that would make him proud. That's the kind of thing Jack could have said, Dr. Reed. Thank you for that. I believe you're a good guy too. Right, that's all taken care of at the Western Docks. Now it's time to rest. I want to get to this hideout here in the West End, and it looks like we have a really, really high-level skull to deal with. Oh, a bunch of them. Oh god. Oh! They're boomers.
explore this place more later. Let's just rest for now. Whoa. Not an enemy. Wait, is this the hideout? Oh, this is my own mansion, Reed's mansion. We can sleep in our own bed. Oh, wow. God, I am a rich fuck, aren't I? That person over there, maybe a butler or something? Or, you know, like, caretaker? Small key. Key to Aubrey Reed's office. Okay, well, there's going to be a lot to explore here, that's for sure. But first, new abilities. Alright, let's go over everything that I changed, because I changed a lot with 14,000 XP. That is so much. Right, so first I upgraded all these body things and blood things once, so 50 more health, I think 20% or 10% more endurance, a uh, bit more blood capacity, a bit more blood from bite, um, I got more bullets, more syringes, I uh, didn't touch that. So that's just general upgrading of my stats, and then I also upgraded, I think, all of my attacks? Yeah. Yeah, actually all of my attacks that I use. Oh, except for Claw. I, I left Claw alone because I was already down the specialization tree, but a lot of other things were at level 2 and hadn't been specialized yet. So, Shadow Mist has now been specialized from 2 to 3, so it does 100 more damage, 300 Shadow to 400. No difference other than that, so it just does straight up more damage. This specialization tree up here is the more damage one, just does lots and lots of damage. This one down here does way less damage, but gives you blood instead. So it's a larger area thing that gives you a bunch of blood from enemies, but does very little damage. And this one just does more damage. I'm not too concerned about blood, because I'm, I'm very good at stunning enemies, so not going to worry too much about that. Just going for straight damage, especially because a lot of my enemies that I'm fighting recently seem to be weak to shadow, so I really want to focus on shadow mist. Next up is Autophagy. I upgraded that one time and started specializing it. These specializations are weird. It took me a while to realize what's even different. So, the level before heals 250. This one looks like it only heals 200, right? But it says 200 up there and then down below it says 100 healing. And the description says you trade the instant health gain for a greater regeneration. So I think what that means, I'm pretty sure, is that... It'll heal 300 health overall, but it might take a little bit of time and it's not instant. So it does actually do 300 healing instead of 250, so it is an upgrade to the total number healed. And the difference between this branch and this branch is this one can be cast more often. See the recovery is 2 seconds instead of 3. It's significantly more expensive, from 15 to 25, which is pretty huge actually. And what you gain is that you get all the health instantly instead of having to wait for it. The recovery time, I'm not too worried about. Like, I don't cast it every couple seconds anyway. So, not worried about that. The cost I am worried about, so I definitely want to go with this one. And other than that, the total health healed is the same. Next up, Coagulation. So I started specializing that, and I focused on Blood Gain instead of the other ones, which would give you more seconds of control. Basically stun them for longer. Well, it's not a stun, because you can't bite them or anything, but... You know what I mean. And the reason for that is because I don't think there's really much of a value for me for making an enemy stop for 5 seconds, 8 seconds, 10 seconds. Because really, the only thing I use coagulation for, for the most part, is just to give me a little bit of breathing room to make sure that, for example, Shadow Mist, that gets cast at their feet, to make sure that they don't move away from that so that they take that damage. And for that, 3 seconds is perfectly fine. Or just a tiny bit of time to use like Autophagy and use a Serum or something. Yeah, 3 seconds is perfectly fine, so getting tons of time to control an enemy, not too important to me. So instead I just went for the one that leaves it at 3 seconds. So these are all 3 seconds, no matter which one you get, but you get some blood from it. 10, 15, and 20. And remember, coagulation doesn't actually cost anything to cast, so it, you only gain blood, you don't lose it. And I got the next level of Blood Cauldron, which isn't a specialization, it's just the next level. So from 500 blood damage to 630. By the way, I finally figured out what that number down below means, I think. That's the area of effect damage. 
I think. I thought maybe it gave me that much blood. No, it certainly doesn't. Yeah, I think that's AoE damage. Really should be clear about that. Anyway, I'm way more powerful than I was before. Let's see what happens. See what happens with the districts. I'm worried. All right, what's going on up, up? Okay, that's for the west end. It went up a little bit. Nice. 83. It went up. Yes. Yes, it's healthy. Whitechapel's healthy. Oh, I'm glad. And only one person is sick now. Great. Pembroke Hospital, please do well. Stay the same? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Now, <laughs> let's see how the docks are doing. Are they above hostile? Probably not. 42. Okay, they went up by 6%. We're almost out of hostile. Just need to go back there and make sure I kill these people. Fatigue, fatigue, and cold. Okay. Yeah. Alright, let's look around our own damn mansion. Oh my god, look at that light. Let's hold on. Let's get a look at this. What an opulent light and night table. Or nightstand, rather. It looks like... Is that granite? Is that a, like a granite... Some sort of granite or stone... Um, nightstand? Which, by the way, is not flush with the wall. It's at a weird angle. That bothers me. But also, look at this light. It's got or like ornamental roses all over it. It's also glass. You're so rich, Reed. <laughs> Look at this place, my god. Oh, there's... Looks like mostly dead flowers at this door. Is that maybe... Or was that Mary's door? Or maybe the mother's door? That's what the small key was for. Looks like my study, I guess. Yep, looks like typical mansion-y things. Expensive artwork. Little statue. Bust. Piece of a dead animal. The usual. Some Old dude. Aubrey Reed's first letter. Reed Mansion, 4th of April, 1908. My dear and beloved John, when you receive this letter, you will be 35 and I'll be long gone. I feel a little silly writing you this first letter that you won't read for a few years. I struggled for a long time about how best to write you this until I remembered the puzzle, uh, the puzzle and riddles I invented for you when you were a boy. Oh, how you love to solve those enigmas. Well, I found it would be a good idea to propose to you one final game. It will probably be less rewarding. No candies or exotic treasures for you if you decipher the game this time. But a greater treasure, perhaps. The truth. This is my only attempt for you to explain why I chose to leave my family without an explanation. If you want to know why, simply play my little game. It's really up to you, my son. Rest assured that I love you. I promise my family was and still is everything to me. I remember the first time I held you and your sister in my arms. My treasures. My jewels. To see you grow up, play, and laugh filled my heart with joy every time I went back to our home. I could have killed to protect you. My son, my daughter, my wife. But fate found me in the end, and I had to make a tough decision. The worst was to disappear without a word. I decided to do it anyway. 
and soon I'll be gone for good. I don't ask for forgiveness, but for understanding. If you want to know more, all you have to do is remember how happy we were back in those days. If you want to find the next message, think green grass and tall trees on sunny Sundays. From your affectionate father, Aubrey Reed. What the fuck is wrong with our father? If you want to understand why I left you and our family without a word, play my game. Dad, that's fucked up. That's really fucked up, Dad. Green grass, tall trees on sunny I remember sun Sunday walks in the park. Park. Yep, so this must be the park. Okay. Oh, it's an investigation anyway, isn't it? So it probably will just mark it on the map for me. There's got to be some deeper meaning to the father leaving, right? It sounds important. I wonder if it's related to what's happened with us now, like some sort of lineage of vampir vampirism in the family. Let's go downstairs. That's the same dude that was in the study room. Whoever that is, it must be really important. Maybe that's the father. Old letter, Reed Mansion, 8th of March, 1908. My dear Avery, as I already told you several days ago, I may be forced to leave England, if only for a few months. While I'm away, and until my son comes back to London, I want you to take the best care of our house. I already made the entire necessary arrangements to have your wages increased and paid as long as you'll work. You promised me you'd protect my dear wife and serve her to the best of your ability. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. If I am never to return, you are the only man I fully trust. Believe me, your most affectionate friend, Aubrey Reed. So Avery must be the person, probably. Um, yeah, Avery Cork, that picture, is that person up there. So they are the caretaker. Eh, let's not go outside. Just wanted to see if the door was locked from the inside or something. This place is so opulent. My god. <laughs> silver forks. <laughs> I'm looting silverware from my mansion. Yeah, I think that's it. I need to find a way to get to Avery Cook? Cork? Whatever the name was. Oh, hi. Good evening, Avery. Mr. Jonathan, I can't believe my own eyes. Oh, you have come back too late, sir. Far too late. I know, Avery. I know about Mary and my mother. I'm so sorry. It was my duty to watch over her. She left the house in the middle of the night. The police said... It's all right, Avery. The police said her body was found near your sister's grave in Whitechapel. You're the master of the house now. I'd understand if you fired me, sir. Could you actually fire them? That'd be so cruel. Oh, they have a cold. Let's help them out. Do you need medical? Yeah. Level four. Leave if you could? Question mark? I'm not sure what that's asking. Is that asking if they want to leave? Tell me the truth, Avery. Do you feel forced to stay here? Would you leave this house without the arrangement made by my father? No, sir. I have nowhere else to go. And I promised your father I'd take care of his family as long as I live. This house is dead, Avery. There is a curse on this family. 
You really should consider leaving. If only you could have been here sooner or more often. Maybe this house would not be that empty. But you're here now, sir. So my task is not over. That's so sad. They have nowhere else to go and the family they've been tasked with looking after is... basically dead? I mean, I'm technically sort of dead. Undead. Mary just died. The mother just died. I forgot their name. The father is... I guess they're not known. I guess no one knows if the father's dead or not. But they're gone. Wow, you can tell them to go. That is... I don't know, that's fucked up. I get that the family's kind of over, but they have nowhere else to go, Jonathan. You have served this family extremely well, Avery. Your support during these terrible times is much appreciated. Then I will stay. All I ask is that you take care of my own funeral if I die before the end of the epidemic. No mass grave, please, sir. Okay, agreed. Do you really think I neglected my mother, Avery? Yes. I see. Well, please go on, speak freely. It's not as if there is anything left to treasure in this house. Just like your father, you always had this capacity to focus only on what interests you. It surely helped you become a great doctor, but... Not such a great son. I found an old letter written by my father and addressed to me. Do you know anything about it, Avery? Your father wanted me to give you this letter for your 35th birthday, but you left for the war and the letter remained in his office until tonight. I realize now you knew my father better than I did. Do you know why he left, Avery? Did he ever speak to you about his departure? No, sir. Mr. Reed was not exactly forthcoming. Perhaps this letter will give you the information you require. What is the situation in this part of town? For a time, the West End seems spared by the epidemic. But the situation is getting much worse. Have you no relatives anywhere? I'll understand if you want to take a few days to see family. Your father managed to guarantee my earnings as long as I take care of this house, sir. My sisters are dead, and I've never met my nephews. I'll stay, sir. How was life in this house while I was away? It was sad, sir. Miss Mary moved here in July after she lost her baby and husband. So I stayed to serve both her and your mother. How was my mother? Miss Reed was very frail. After Miss Mary was found dead, your mother started talking to herself. She said she was speaking to the dead. She even said that she had seen you. How was Mary? Miss Mary went out looking for you every night after you had written to say that you were coming back. She was sure you were alive. She'll never know she was right. What are the arrangements for my mother's funeral? There will be no funeral, sir. No ceremony whatsoever, because of the sanitary situation. Where is her body, then? I'm afraid your mother's body was moved to a mass grave somewhere. I have no other information. Civil service is paralyzed, sir. And London is crumbling down. I'm sorry I could not be here for Mary's funeral. Your mother was strong, sir. But your support would have been appreciated. Apart from the priest and I, no one else attended your sister's funeral. To be present at the funeral with you both was my dearest wish, Avery. But I'm sorry I simply could not attend. I would not dare to question your absence, Mr. Jonathan. All I can say is that we missed you a great deal during these difficult days. Thank you, Avery. We'll talk later. Your bedroom is ready as always. Good night, sir. Just want to stop for a second and go out to this camera. 
I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, but I've certainly noticed it for a while. And that's that the... This game is generally very good looking, especially when you're out in the city. The environments are very good. And some of the characters look pretty good, like Jonathan, for example. Jonathan looks very creepy, but also very good. And everything they're wearing looks good. But some of the characters that you speak with look so bizarrely terrible. I think it's a bug, actually. It is a bug, isn't it? I was about to say, it, they look so terrible that I think it's a bug, because if you notice during the conversation, I'll put some footage on the screen right now of what they look like during the conversation, but their face looked fine. But the stuff that they were wearing, their suit, just looked like a complete blurry mess, almost as if it was like a super low quality, maybe LOD version of what their body should look like. What a weird bug, I wonder what causes that. If we go through the outside, we can get into, I guess, this is their room? They don't mind that I'm here. Can't open the door normally, but it's fine. Oh, sir. What a terrible tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible. I feel so bad for them. And while they're crying, I'm looting them. It's locked, all right. Who could have done such an evil thing? Poor Miss Reed. Is there anything more we can say? Yes, sir. No. Thank you, Ed. Your bed. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. We're now vastly more powerful than we were before. And we've discovered our old place where we used to live. And that boomer skull down there is actually throwing up. So I guess they don't just sound like they're throwing up, they also do throw up. Ill-formed blinker skull. That is such a disturbing name, ill-formed. Alright, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to explore more of the West End.